All right. So welcome to lesson three. Okay. So today we're just going to look at continuing simplifying algebraic expressions with exponents. Okay. So ultimately the goal will be um, a continuation of the goals that we were working on last week. Right. So we, we want to be able to simplify an exponential ex expression using power laws. Okay. Um, and then exp always express answers with positive exponents. Okay. That takes care of this uh, success criteria. Okay. Um, and then evaluate the simplified expression if given conditions in which to do so. So that means like if I'm provided with um, a value for the variables under whatever conditions, okay, after you've simplified. So um, in the homework, you'll see some more of those. I showed you how to do those last week. So just, basically today is getting a little bit more practice with everything, okay? So we'll just go through these pretty quickly. Um, and as I go through these, I'll talk about... Um, which power law I'm using, okay? So with the first one, I see two bases uh, that are the same. In this case, it's x. So I know that the, the answer is going to have an x in it. And then I'm looking at the exponents next. And, and I know what the we call this a law of products, right? I'm going to add the exponents together when I multiply two things with the same base. So this one's going to be 6 plus 5, okay? So that's going to be x to the eleven. Okay, now the opposite is true for the next question, right? So my, my base this time is going to be t, okay? And then because I'm dividing, I have a different power law, okay? And so I, when I divide, I have to subtract the exponents. Okay? Now, if there was a condition that t equals, let's say t equals 2, and that could even be up, uh, put it up here by the question, right? So we could have uh, evaluate when t equals 2, then you would just simply take your simplified expression, right? And plug in the value of t equals 2 into it. Okay, so you would get uh, where t equals 2, it would be 2 squared, which would equal 4. That would be the answer after I've simplified and evaluated. Okay. So let's take a look at the next one. Um, so I see two numbers. They aren't necessarily divisible. So you can just leave them as 5 thirds. Right, and then you're gonna write your base, which is x. And then again, we're dividing, so I'm gonna subtract the exponents. And so my answer is gonna be 5 thirds x squared. Okay. Now the next one's an easy one. If you recall um, anything, the power of zero equals one, okay? So this is equal to one, this question, okay? And that's because this zero, if you recall, if this was a two or something or whatever, whatever the exponent is, it gets applied to all or everything inside of the brackets, okay? So in this case, it's a zero. So zero, or z to the zero is gonna be one. Um, the second arch here, the second rainbow is gonna be y cubed, but it's an exponent raised to an exponent, so I have to multiply the zero, which again, I get y to the zero, which is one. So basically, you get a series of Um, four zeros, zero, 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 which is one multiplied by one multiplied by one multiplied by one, which is equal to one. That's how we arrive at this answer, okay? So the zero goes on top of everything that's inside of the bracket, and then you have a whole bunch of um, bases to the power of zero, and it works out that it's just a bunch of ones multiplied together, okay? So you can just deduce. You don't need to show me this. 
you can just see that it's multiplied to zero and you can just tell me that it's one or sorry, it's, it's to the power of zero and you can just say it's equal to one. Okay. So let's take a look at the next one. Sometimes these questions will be lined up nicely like this. Sometimes they won't be right. Um, you can see how the bases are lined up nicely here. Right. And then you've also got numbers at the beginning. So what you can do is just apply your power laws to each of these bases, okay? Now you have numbers or number at the beginning or fraction, if you will, okay? It's going to be, and again, remember what this says, simplify, right? So 15 over 25, and then I'm, I'm going to apply all the power laws first, and then I'll simplify that after, okay? So... It's 15 over 25, and then I'm going to have A, because that's the first base, okay? And it's, they're all divided, so it's going to be uh, 5 minus 3, and then it's going to be B, 2 minus 3, and C, 4 minus 4, right? You can see where each of those numbers come from. They're the exponents, right? So then I can actually um, reduce 15 over 25, okay? I can divide both of them by five, and then five goes into 15 three times, and it goes into 25 five times, okay? And then you're gonna be left with, now you can do the work on the exponents. So uh, we're gonna get left with a squared, b to the negative one, and c to the zero, okay? Well, c to the zero is just gonna be one, so that basically cancels out. And the only other thing you have to deal with here is this negative exponent, right? Because simplify implies always express with positive exponents. Okay. Okay, you always want to express. That's a part of the simplifying process. If there's something else you can do to simplify it, and do it and the negative exponent falls into that category right so what i'm going to be left with is 3 a squared over 5 b okay so let's take a look at the next one we got uh x is the base and i'm dividing so let's subtract the exponents this one's a little trickier i'm going to subtract negative seven. So I'm going to be left with x to the negative three plus seven, which is going to be x to the four. Okay. A little tricky with the negative there. Okay. This one here, you could do this one of two ways. Okay. I prefer to apply the exponent law. Okay, but there's nothing wrong with you doing this. If this is what you're comfortable with, then uh, it also works and it will give you an answer. Um, I prefer, because it's easier, to apply the exponent law, right? But there's actually nothing wrong with doing this. Multiplied by itself. because okay, this exponent just implies that there are two of these, right? And then you could do your expansion process on those two brackets, okay? Not the best way, I don't think, to do this question. I would choose just to distribute or use exponents raised to exponents and apply that exponent law to this question, right? So in this case, I'd have an imaginary one on the three, and when I have exponents raised to exponents, I multiply. So I'm going to be negative 3 squared x to the negative 2 y to the power of 4. And then I can finish that question off. So negative 3 squared is going to be 9 x to the negative 2 y4, which is equal to 9 y4 divided by x squared. Okay, that's a lot faster than having to do the expansion and collecting like terms if there are any. Okay, I would just prefer to um, apply the exponent law. OK, 
Okay, the next one we're going to get practice doing the expansion. Okay, so what you're going to do here, because there's no plus signs or minus signs in here, like it's not like I have a plus there, I really just have one piece multiplied against the other, right? If I had a plus sign, then I'd have two pieces and I would have to distribute, right? To each, to everything that's in the other bracket. But I don't have the plus sign. So what I'm able to do this time is I can just multiply the common bases together. I can just apply my power laws, right? So with this question, I can go negative five. I'm just going to multiply the common bases. So the numbers are going to go together. So it's going to be negative five multiplied by negative two. Okay. And then I have X is up next. So I'm going to go multiply because it's all multiplied x to the negative 2 multiplied by x to the negative 3 multiplied by y multiplied by y squared and then you have common bases so you get to add the exponents so what i'm going to be left with here is going to be positive 10 and then it's going to be x to the negative 2 plus negative 3 which is going to be negative 5 and then i'm going to have y cubed and my final answer is just going to be 10y cubed divided by x to the power of 5. Okay. Two left. And then you have lots of examples to be able to watch and then actually do the work. Okay. So these ones get a little bit more complicated. Okay. Simply because we have to apply the exponent inward first. Actually, we don't have to. You could do it whatever order. And I'm just looking at K. Um, for J, J is a little bit different. You have to apply the exponent in first for J. Okay. Okay. So let's do, and that's because if we look at, I'll just expand on that. Okay. So for J, I have to do the exponents first, E, before division and multiplication, okay, for J. However, for K, well, you can apply the exponent in two, but I think I've seen these questions work where you can do the work inside and then apply the negative three to it afterward as well. Okay. Um, I think because these exponents aren't the same, you're not allowed to do that here. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm just going to apply the negative two. So I have exponents raised to exponents. Okay. So I'm just going to multiply all the exponents in the, in the top and the bottom. Okay. So I'm going to get three negative one multiplied by negative two is going to be positive two. Okay, so it's three squared, and then a to the negative eight, and b to the positive six, that's all going to be divided by, we got to do the bottom now, it's going to be six squared, right? a four b to the negative two, c to the negative four. Okay. And now I'll just do a little bit. Of, I'll get the square sorted. So it's going to be nine, a to the negative eight, b six over 36, a four, b squared, negative two, sorry, and c to the negative four. Okay. And then I'm just going to apply my power laws now okay so i can use the division because i'm dividing i'm going to subtract the exponents um 9 over 36 which can be simplified afterward okay and then we'll go a to the negative 8 minus 4 b to the power of 6 minus negative 2 and c to the zero minus negative four. Okay, if you recall, you could just leave this question, the C in the denominator, but um, 
this is me kind of like there is an imaginary c to the zero in the numerator okay because it's just equal to one so this is my way of kind of dealing with the negative exponent that's in the bottom right either way if you want to just leave the c in the bottom um, you're going to end up flipping it to the numerator anyway it's going to become positive and i know it's going to become positive because i have to flip it but also here when i subtract a negative from a negative or sorry when I have 0 minus negative 4, it's going to become positive. So then I know it's going to land in the numerator anyway. Okay. So I'm just going to... 9 over 36 is 1 quarter. Okay. 9, 18, 27, 36. So that's 1 quarter. Okay. 9 can get divided by 9. 36 gets divided by 9 by 4 times. And then I'm going to have 8 or sorry a negative 8 minus 4 is going to be negative 12 b to the power of 8 and c to the 4 okay my last step is going to be we'll leave it one quarter for a second then i'll show you something else i got to bring the a to the denominator okay so it's going to be b to the 8 c4 over a12 okay and what i've done here is i've left this fraction separate from the exponent work that i've done but all i'm doing is multiplying fractions so i'm going to multiply the top times everything in the top and i'm going to multiply the bottom by everything in the bottom so my final answer here is just going to be one actually you don't even need to write the one it's just going to be b to the 8 c4 over 4a to the power of 12. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the last one. And you guys will be good to go. There's the tons of examples here for you, okay? Um, and the homework question should be posted already in the lesson, okay? So I'm just going to upload this after. You guys can have a go at it. And then uh, if you have any questions, you can let me know, okay? Um, so this is a pretty light lesson for the week, given that you guys have a summative on Friday, okay? So... Let's just take a look here at this one. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, I'm going to apply the negative three. Um, I can apply it afterward. Okay, it'll be different than the last question. How about that? So we'll do the work on the inside, and we'll carry that negative three down. Okay. Okay, so let's let's do uh, fifteen over twenty five. We saw earlier was three fifths. Right. And this is all going to stay in brackets here for a sec. And then I'm going to have m to the three minus one, sorry, minus uh, negative two. And then I'm gonna have n to the negative two minus negative four. And then that's just p to the negative one. And all of that is raised to the exponent of negative three. Okay, and now I'm just gonna do the math on this. So. It's three fifths m to the five n two p to the negative one. Okay, <clears throat> and all that to the power of negative three. Okay, and then I can rearrange the inside to be three m to the power of five n squared over five p, and all that's to the negative three. Okay, and then you can apply the negative 3 to everything on the inside, everything, right? So um, the next step here is going to go like this, and I might use the bottom page here in a sec, okay? But it's going to go 3 to the negative 3, m to the negative 15, because I'm, again, I have exponents raised to exponents, so I'm multiplying, right? So it's 5 times negative 3 is negative 15, Okay. And then it's n to the negative 6 over 5 to the negative 3, p to the negative 3. Okay. Now, I need to, basically, the entire thing's going to flip. Everything about this is going to become positive in the next step. And then I can just finish off this question, right? I, I can finish off this question by applying the, the exponent to the numbers, okay? So recall everything 
that's negative, I can change the sign on them by changing where they are in the fraction. So if I take everything from the numerator and move it to the bottom, and vice versa from the bottom to the, to the numerator, the denominator to the numerator, I can change the sign on everything. So my next line here is going to be 5 cubed p cubed over 3 cubed m to the 15 and 6, okay? And then I can just finish this question off by doing 5 cubed, okay? So 5 cubed is 125 p cubed over 3 cubed is 27 m15 n6, okay? And that'll be your final answer. And if I asked you to evaluate, I could say evaluate when P equals uh, 2, M equals 1, and N equals 3. Okay, I could ask you to do that, and then you would just plug everything in, and you'd get a number. That would be your, your final answer after you have evaluated. This is your simplified, okay? Okay, that's your simplified answer, and then you would have an evaluated answer, okay? So just making the distinction between both of those, um, there would be marks allocated um, for all of it, okay? So there's also a quiz up, okay? So you have till Wednesday to do the quiz. Um, it's basically all of this so if you watch these videos and you do some of these homework questions you'll have no problem it's like it's about five five or six questions or something like that okay so that's it um hopefully this is going okay for you i think this is a little bit easier to understand the quadratics um at the moment uh but we'll need these